So, a very, very good evening uh, to all our viewers out here. So, welcome uh, to the first uh, webinar session. Uh, this webinar session is being brought to you on behalf of uh, SS Bilkem Private Limited. Uh, our partners, uh, TPH Biosystem or GmbH, who are uh, the worldwide leaders in injection uh, and resin systems, uh, both for waterproofing as well as soil stabilization, and also uh, in association with uh, IITD, that's Institute for International Talent Development, um, an organization dealing a lot with uh, training, especially in the field of uh, materials. Uh, so firstly, uh, once again, I welcome you all to the webinar. Um, a uh, couple of uh, couple of pointers that I'll give up first. Uh, I would request all the viewers to kind uh, to kindly mute uh, their particular sessions on their on their end, so that uh, your uh, voice is not audible during the during the webinar. Uh, as well as I request you to go down to the left hand side bottom of the screen and uh, and uh, press stop video, so that the video your video feed also stops uh, showing up along with all the others. Uh, another thing I would uh, remind you of is uh, for the uh, uh, with regards to questions, uh, please uh, send your questions forward to Mr. Uh, Kunjan Popat. Uh, his uh, phone number has been uh, his phone number has been. Uh, I would also request uh, there's somebody trying to kind of write on the screen, and uh, I would just request you not to uh, not to do that. I will just kind of pause it and then unpause it again for the time being. Okay, and I will say, uh, as far as the questions go, I would request uh, request you to uh, kindly contact uh, the numbers, uh, number given of Mr. Kunjan Popat on the on the invitation. So you can send him. Uh, can I just please request somebody to turn off their annotate version? Like please don't yeah please don't uh, uh, please do not click on the screen part uh, as it is it uh, kind of hampers the video out here. Uh, you can send your questions in the, during the webinar to uh, to Mr. Kunjan Popat again his mobile number is in the invitation that you invitation that you saw. Uh, so I think uh, with those notes forward, um, uh, apart from the three organizations that I mentioned here. I would also uh, take this time to uh, take this time to uh, uh, thank uh, thank Y, that is Waterproofers Association of India, and particularly its past president, um, uh, Mr. Sandeep Chaudhary, uh, who was the first one to present this idea and uh, as well as take it forward, and then uh, to Mr. Kunjan Popat as well as uh, Mr. Dixit Bajaj, who kind of uh, took this uh, idea and took this concept forward and kind of brought it to fruition. So uh, we are here today to discuss a lot more about waterproofing, uh, some uh, different concepts and solutions that we can think of, uh, that we can think about. And as we say, we'd like to give a tagline to this: that successful waterproofing needs a different concept. See, waterproofing in India is one of those few things that has been, you know, often discussed and touted. And almost every rains, we are back to uh, square one. That is the point that yes, we do have a uh, we do have a waterproofing uh, problem. So what, uh, so what we were thinking is that, yes, can we do something different? Can we make it kind of like a, a system or a concept by which if you follow one, two, three, four, five steps through your waterproofing uh, execution, that your rate of success goes up drastically. And uh, from our experience, what we see, the answer is a definite yes. So what we'd like to do is uh, basically introduce, uh, introduce this concept to you here today. Okay. So once we talk about waterproofing or once we talk about uh, construction, the first thing that we're trying to do today is look at sustainable construction, okay? So the aim of sustainable construction is to get it right uh, the first time, okay? What that means is that we have to optimize the initial cost that we are spending to build a structure and over its life, reduce the maintenance, repair of the structure itself, increase its durability. And at the same time, also focus on the correct usage of products. In waterproofing, one of the key problems that uh, we have seen in the industry 
is that people say, okay, this doesn't work or that doesn't work. I would say a lot of times it is our kind of expectation of what a product is supposed to do is, uh, is incorrect. And uh, so correct usage uh, of a particular type of product is very important. And with this, we have to reduce the impact on money, materials, machinery, and manpower in the field. So that means whatever we do, our sustainable construction should be able to minimize the overall life cycle cost of the entire structure. So that is why you need to come to uh, a good quality, experienced construction chemicals people because our expertise primarily lies with concrete enhancement, uh, with concrete repair and concrete protection. So at the same time, uh, we'll first tell you, okay, how you can make your concrete better. Uh, the next part is how you can protect it for the long run. So waterproofing comes much more under this, uh, under this concrete protection part of it. And third, in case there is a problem, then we uh, would look towards the concrete repair part of it. So we have got solutions for everything and we just need to approach it step by step so we can get a, a sustainable solution for a long a period of time. So to briefly introduce myself, I'm Sanjay Surlaka, your speaker for today evening. I'm the head uh, of technical services at ssbuildchem.com. And uh, also ssbuildchem private limited is uh, collaborating with TPH uh, to provide high-tech injection systems for seeding, uh, strengthening, and consolidation, as well as with IITD, uh, a, an organization that deals much more with uh, much more with training. So, uh, I've been a civil engineer working in this line for almost now 12, 13 years. So, definitely, I hope I can bring a lot more ideas to you uh, through this webinar. To introduce our company very briefly, uh, Asis Bilkem uh, started off uh, quite a while back, um, almost in 1994, so it's almost about 25, 26 years uh, as of now. Uh, and the core focus of our company was being technology driven. That is, identify the latest technologies, bring them, uh, bring them uh, to local standards, uh, use them under local conditions, and adapt the usage of this to do things right. Uh, our company is a lot more uh, R&D based um, and uh, you know it's our technical knowledge and our experience that has kind of uh, led us to be quite successful over the past years. And another focus of ours is in providing training. So both for the materials as to what the materials can do and how do we make construction better as well as in uh, application technology where we can, uh, we can help uh, people out. And also what we deal in with, with the complete range of construction chemicals. So be it admixtures, uh, things like side products, curing compounds, waterproofing systems, tiling, uh, different type of sealers and cleaners, industrial products like grouts and uh, uh, industrial products like grouts, fixing aids and so on, flooring systems, uh, repair and rehabilitation, uh, concrete protection and hydrophobization, those kind of things. And the last but not least, a very special section on heritage structures. So we do have a lot of, uh, lot of solutions in that particular sphere as well. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, demystify waterproofing. So waterproofing is something that causes, uh, causes a lot of confusion in the heads of many people. A lot of people are confused by it, they're confounded by it. But overall, with the concept that we are going uh, forward, it should, not, uh, it should kind of simplify things for a lot of people. So just on a funny, on a funny note, on a funny take, uh, the main, uh, how we basically find out that it's raining outside by the amount of water it leaks into our particular um, uh, into a particular home. So the moment the water starts dripping, you know that it's raining outside. And you know, that is oftentimes a measure of pretty much bad waterproofing or sometimes even just bad construction practices. Another indication that we normally see is the root growth problems. Uh, so things like this, like small plants growing outside your bathroom, the humidity area like that show that your structure is wet and it can sustain life or it can sustain the greenery which grows and this uh, these plant growth in turn further causes damage to your structure and that also creates still more waterproofing or still more leakage problems in the future. Of course, even our uh, big structures are not uh, not immune to this. Like uh, this, was, this was a news from uh, Mumbai Mirror in uh, June 2010 as well as uh, this was a much uh, recent photo in I think about 2017, 2018, somewhere thereabouts. And you can still see that uh, even though we take a lot of care in building up structures, these kind of things do come by once in a while. And you know, the, the uh, side effect or uh, the uh, repercussion of, uh, of bad waterproofing or improper waterproofing systems is end of the day corrosion problems. And this kind of corrosion problems is what eventually leads to 
structural problems like this. Like, and you can pretty much see that a column down here is pretty much damaged just by the ingress of water from the outside. And sometimes it necessitates really, uh, really large repairs. So if outside there's a problem, the water comes in, uh, water comes in from the outside on your chajja or through your uh, parapet walls. This is the uh, this is the particular kind of um, repercussion that you see out of it indoors. And uh, also talking about new waterproofing technologies, I mean uh, we have come so far ahead in terms of materials and application technologies and manpower and skilled uh, people to apply it and. Uh, it is sad to sometimes see that our waterproofing in most places still depends on using tarpaulin as a as a main waterproofing system. So it is somewhere that we are, you know, missing the ball or missing the point in doing waterproofing, or you know, rather than uh, rather than say that we are um, missing some points in kind of you know putting the system together as a whole. So will that uh, whether that is in terms of detailing, in terms of the correct usage of the materials, or in terms of using a secondary protection system or drainage. There's somewhere along the along the line we are missing some parts or some critical uh, points of waterproofing, and that later on causes or manifests itself as uh, as a leakage in your structure. So now, when we talk about waterproofing itself um, uh, as a as a subject itself, we can pretty much put it under two heads. One would preventive waterproofing, that is when that means your structure is brand new uh, or it's newly constructed. And from that point on, uh, and from that point on, uh, it is uh, uh, so just uh, so I may just take one minute, uh, like one minute pause. Um, I hope this meeting is coming through because I'm do getting a couple of messages saying that. Uh, A few members are saying that the link is not active, but maybe if you can just try it again, maybe it's a small, uh, maybe it's a small uh, glitch somewhere. And if I can just request uh, request the users to kind of stop drawing on the screen, because it also it also takes uh, takes away from the other uh, from the other uh, listeners out here. Okay, so. I'll just pause my share and redo so it kind of resets resets the resets the system up here. Let's pause it. Oops. Let's do. Okay, so we are back. So uh, we can take out waterproofing uh, as a part that uh, it can do it uh, as a preventive waterproofing. That means when a structure is new or when it is just being built from that part on, we, um, we apply or do the waterproofing right the first time and you won't have problems later on. And the second is you can also take a look at it as a remedial waterproofing. So what that means is that water has already entered the structure and from there we are trying to repair it and then you know again put in all the safeguards in place so that structure doesn't leak forward. So before that we need to uh, we need to understand uh, uh, we need to understand how water enters the structure. So basically water would uh, enter through the concrete porosity that is composed of pores and capillaries. Now this kind of a problem can be solved by using good integral waterproofing additives. Uh, the second way water can enter your structure would be through concrete defects, that means void and cracks. So here the first particular solution would be to look at injection grouting. And uh, once the injection grouting is done, the surface is all uh, made back to its original state, then coating it and protecting it properly. Uh, the last part where water enters most of the time in a building is discontinuity. That means you are taking a look at joints and transitions. And it's from these joints that the water has a tendency to uh, entire structures uh, very very easily, and these uh, uh, these kind of uh, problems can be solved by using the right kind of water bars. So this is kind of put between uh, uh, put between the joints. Uh, using joint and uh, joint tapes or expansion tapes, uh, expansion joint tapes. This kind of prevent any outside water from entering your structure. 
and uh, in some cases you can also use reinforced coating that in the same waterproof coating that you are going to use to protect your structure if you reinforce that with a with a mesh or with a reinforcing medium then you can also use that to treat your discontinuities over time so now when we talk about waterproofing many people classify it in different ways like i've uh, often got questions like uh, do you have uh, a bathroom waterproofing or do you have a terrace waterproofing I would say that's a very generic, uh, generic way of talking about waterproofing because, uh, like, an area doesn't. Uh, of course, an area will define what uh, what products you use. But I would say we have to look at it rather than a product. We have to look at uh, look at it more as a system. Thereby, just saying something that I need basement waterproofing or I need podium waterproofing is not a complete solution unless a product a particular spec uh, specifies like okay, what what different. Uh, what different items you need into it. So area-based waterproofing can be one way people classify it. Uh, many other people classify it simply as materials. Uh, do you have P waterproofing, for example? Do you have crystalline waterproofing, for example? So you know, uh, with these kind of things, uh, that again becomes uh, that also becomes another problem. Uh, and it is not you know it doesn't give you like a holistic view of what a waterproofing system should pretty much look like. Uh, again, some people go by crystalline. Whether uh, you have, say, this kind of uh, specific crystalline technology or that kind of hydrophobic technology or a third type of coating technology or some enhanced PUs or uh, mixed polyureas, you know, technologies like that. And people talk as if it's a very generic thing. So, end of the day, I think the guiding factor has to simply be performance. Rather than go by a particular name, uh, I think it's just take a look at how, how the material is going to perform. So that should be one thing. And lastly, you have to decide like whether the waterproofing is positive or negative. The positive waterproofing uh, would mean that you are doing the waterproofing, say the water is coming through here, you're doing the waterproofing on the external wall, right in contact with the water. Negative waterproofing means if the water is coming through here, you will be doing waterproofing along this particular wall inside. Okay? So once you kind of decide those, it, um, it kind of gives you a lot of clarity on what your waterproofing should look like. So over time, what our experience has told us is that the water, uh, waterproofing concept can be simply broken down into these five steps. Okay, so the first step consists of base improvement, uh, that is improving the concrete itself, improving the base on which the waterproofing is done. So once you get your base up to a particular standard, get it to a very good conditions, uh, a very good condition. Then the next part you look at is filling cracks and voids into your um, <coughs> into your substrate. So you do that, you take uh, you take the help of injection grouting. There are a lot of modern materials and uh, techniques available here. Uh, once that is done, you take a good look at treating your joints. You kind of render them waterproof. Okay. So any anything, any uh, ingress uh, trying to come in from these kind of places, you can very easily, uh, very easily treat. Uh, then you take a look at waterproof your coating system on top of your, uh, once all these three steps are done, Next, you go to the waterproof coatings. That will ensure that there is a seamless barrier or a seamless protection barrier across the area where the water is trying to enter. And last but not least, you have to protect this uh, protect this coating. So you have to provide the apt drainage and protection. This can be something as simple as plaster, something uh, something like the modern uh, dimple boards today, or um, um, uh, or similar kind of methods that you can use to. Um, to treat or to protect your uh, systems, water building system. So when we talk about the base improvement part of uh, concrete or the base improvement, so the first thing that comes to mind is waterproof concrete. So the base is very, very important waterproofing. So if you have a base and if the water is trying to get into it and you want to keep the water away from it, the first thing you have to do is make this base itself waterproof. If this part is not waterproof, if this part is full of cracks, if this part is porous, it doesn't matter what, what you apply on top of it, it is going to create uh, it is going to create uh, certain problems for your material performance in the future. So now concrete is a very popular building material, but concrete is permeable. So the, perme uh, the permeability depends on uh, gel pores, uh, which are very, very small. These come as byproducts of hydration, so normally they don't allow much much water transport to them. The more dangerous part of it comes uh, with capillary pores. So they are much, much bigger than your basic uh, gel pores. These materials do, or uh, this particular pore does allow transport of water. And last is your compaction pores. 
So this come because of air entrainment into your mix or uh, it's not compacted properly. And these voids are pretty large. Like you can pretty much see from your gel port to your compaction uh, ports. It's over almost close to about 500 to 1000 times the size of, of uh, this tiny uh, pore out here. And these, these two, so basically your capillary pores and your uh, compaction pores are what we are here to treat by using uh, integral water cooling systems. So also on a similar line is like what causes the deterioration. Now, if your uh, concrete base is uh, uh, concrete base is a bit permeable, so it will allow carbon dioxide, chlorides, and water to slowly reach uh, your reinforcement. And it is this thing that actually causes uh, damage to your structures. On a macro level, that is on a micro level. You know? So there is there is a transport or ingress of the uh, ingress of the um, uh, water and the carbon dioxide through your concrete. But on the macro level, also basically things like honeycombing. These are a very easy access for water and uh, water and other uh, problem causing ingredients to reach your reinforcement much much earlier. Um, so now uh, when we talk about uh, can I just request uh, who was trying to yeah, uh, just uh, please keep your uh, hands away from the screen because it's just causing those lines to come on. So now, uh, if we take a look at uh, the, the impact of water cement ratio, so basically good concrete is made with minimal water cement ratio. And if you keep the water cement ratio very low, which is at say somewhere around 0.4, so your capillaries or the pore or the porosity of the concrete becomes very segmented in a time period of about three days, which is which is a very nominal time to do it. Now, if your uh, if your uh, if your water cement ratio is say somewhere around 0 0.5, 0 0.6. You can see that the time taken is almost 14 days or two weeks to about six months for all the capillaries to be segmented. So up to that time, the concrete will actually allow a lot of the deleterious materials to, uh, to enter into the concrete. So the simple thing being uh, simply reduce the water cement ratio, the permeability of your concrete or the water uh, tightness of your concrete will increase automatically. So, um, once we began thinking about how to improve concrete, so we thought about using sustained crystallization systems or hydrophobic pore blocking technology, and we can use this to prevent uh, to prevent uh, water coming through your concrete. So to give you an idea of, of the working mechanisms of this, is like if you're using the right uh, right type of um, right type of um, uh, integral waterproofing additive, uh, part of it will work by re reducing your capillaries in your concrete itself. So that means your mix becomes easier to compact. It helps a little bit with water reduction. Um, maybe in some cases it also entrains a little bit of air. But once all these things come through, it kind of helps your uh, helps your capillaries themselves to reduce over time. Uh, then the second part is uh, by achieving capillary pore block uh, capillary blocking due to inactive pore blockers or crystallization. So in this case, there can be something like finely divided materials. In some cases, uh, even crystallization, it refers to uh, byproducts uh, of hydration, that is uh, lime that gets deposited into your capillaries and blocks them. In other cases, crystalline also or crystallization also refers to the secondary hydration of, um, uh, of say, some type of uh, pozzolanic activity, which kind of densifies the system as a whole. So your capillary blocking is one uh, another mechanism by which it can run, and then. Uh, the last one would be to add something hydrophobic uh, to your uh, to your admixture mix so that uh, the hydrophobicity itself treats uh, treats your capillaries and does not allow water to uh, pass through them that easily. So the aim is to finally minimize the pore volume. For example, if this is your basic things like uh, cement, uh, like cement particles in your mix. Then what we do with the additive technology is that we introduce uh, uh, materials that are a little bit smaller than cement, mix it with materials that are still smaller than those particles, and these materials are all reactive. And once they're reactive, they kind of react, they create a lot more uh, CSH gel, and they can kind of you know fill in all the teeny tiny spaces between the reacted cement as well, rendering your concrete waterproof. So. The first uh, method, if we, uh, uh, the first um, uh, principle, if we take it, is reduction of capillarity. So you can just consider that this is your concrete, and um, it mostly concrete will tend to have all these capillaries into it. So if you're using the right kind of integral waterproofing additive, 
it helps uh, like the water uh, in the absence of it the water can travel very freely to the uh, to the capillaries but with the right additive your compaction is improved and when your compaction is improved your water is reduced automatically the amount of your capillaries also go on reducing drastically so in this case very little water is able to uh, go through uh, go through your particular capillary Uh, to explain the hydrophobic effect, uh, so a lot of the older generation hydrophobes are very simple uh, kind of animal fats. So from fats, it came up to a little bit um, uh, specific material like steroids. And today, in the modern age, we are using very advanced materials like silanes and uh, siloxanes. So these materials basically are hydrophobic in nature. And uh, what what they do is, without the hydrophobic material, your water is able to pass through very easily through a capillary. So now, when you add this hydrophobic uh, additives to your um, uh, to your concrete, it kind of gives each and every pore or each and every capillary a kind of lining. So now, when water tries to go, the capillary or the hydrophobic material kind of blocks the water. It repels the water and does not allow water to go through. And the last but not least is the crystallization process. If you are talking about so crystallization or pore blocking, so a lot of our materials uh, actually have. Um, Uh, have you know very fine, very tiny, finely divided materials, which in the presence of any water in the capillary, these materials start to expand, and once these expand, they kind of fit tight within your capillary and block the capillary, thereby uh, preventing other water uh, from going through. And also, uh, what we are adding is very, very finely divided uh, porcelain. These are materials which are much more reactive than uh, uh, much more reactive than silica fume. And uh, it kind of uh, sits there in the capillary. So, in the presence of calcium hydroxide, in the presence of water, this particular uh, these particular materials start hydrating pretty much, so forming more and more CSH gel. It's just an enlarged view of the whole thing. Firstly, the finely divided materials. So, in presence of water, these materials kind of expand. Okay, you can see the expansion happening there. And in addition, what we have is other uh, uh, crystalline seeds, what we call. So in the presence of calcium hydroxide, in the presence of water, these seeds starts reacting. It starts crystallizing, and thereby it blocks the capillary. So uh, when we started uh, working on the uh, when we started working on uh, this concept, basically the effect that we saw over time was that in the presence of water, as more as the uh, concrete is uh, continuously in the presence of water, even curing, the effect kind of goes through and through and through the concrete. So as long as there is water, this effect kind of continues, and the concrete keeps getting densified. So based on the concepts, we also uh, bought out a lot of um, uh, we uh, kind of broke down our product range into three or four into four different materials. So like uh, your basic material is uh, called concrete HL. So this works only on two concepts like the capillary reduction and compaction improvement. Uh, generally used for concrete uh, concrete less than N30. Then the next step or the next evolution on this product is uh, Conproof HP, which adds an hydrophobic effect to your additive. So this can be used again for uh, basic concrete, M30, M40. It can be used very well for protective plaster. Then to upgrade this material further, we came up with a crystalline additive. So it has got all the three basic uh, three basic parameters from the first last material, and then it adds a very very specific crystallization system to it. So this can be used for concretes uh, more than M40. Even when you're doing deep basements or something like that, then this becomes very very useful. And last but not least, we also created a similar kind of material, incorporating these materials for uh, incorporating these properties for plasters or for mortars. So it's kind of an air entertainment system along with a water repellent, a water retention, uh, a water retention material, a hydrophobic material, as well as other materials to make it you know work, uh, make a plaster work properly. So this is just to give you an idea of how that particular looks. Like the plaster itself, you can see this is a plaster that's actually made with a crust sand that one of our um, one of our partner sites in Mumbai. So you can just see the quality of the plaster itself. It's very clean, made with crust sand. Still, the applicability or the kind of uh, texture of the plaster itself looks uh, looks very very nice. This is what it looks like. This plaster, even with crust and uh, certain part crust and part of the material, uh, they call silicon. We use both of them. 
you can see the texture is beautiful, this material becomes very easy to apply. And by default, it will be a lot more, um, a lot more water resistant so that your basic waterproofing system or your external and your will be protected over time. Another line uh, that normally helps with the water, uh, water uh, resistant property or the waterproof uh, properties is, uh, uh, is polymers. So simply using acrylic polymers or SBR polymers can definitely help improve the uh, performance of your um, performance of your mortar. So anything that you're using for either making your covings in waterproofing or for even for plasters, even as bonding ports. So there's got uh, these kind of materials have got a lot of application, and I would uh, please uh, talk to us for doing this. You can make more different kind of waterproof mortars out of it, repair mortars. You can use it for tiling, wall plasters, putties. So it opens up a whole uh, whole new area of application that you can look into to uh, improve your structure. So this pre pre pretty much does it with you know addressing the concrete improvement part of it. So if once you're using these kind of materials into the concrete. It will definitely get better and it makes life easier for the next step, which is treatment of uh, cracks and voids. So if we talk about cracks and voids, the first thing that comes to mind is grouting. So before we had grouting, the simplest product to use was a simple water plug. That means it's a very, very fast setting material. You simply, in a glove hand, you take the material, mix it with a bit of water, push it into the, push it into the water, uh, push it into the, uh, into the crack or into the, cavity letting uh, letting go of water and the water stops almost instantaneously this was the most basic uh, most basic form of uh, grouting or the most basic uh, form of stopping water earlier on or filling the cracks and voids earlier on then this gave way to much more sophisticated systems like uh, injection grouting this is kind of a cement grouting system and from there we are going to very very uh, very very i would say sophisticated systems that uh, use things like polyurethanes, it use things like epoxies, uh, acrylate gels today, and a lot of, uh, lot of um, uh, options are available to now do waterproofing. So this kind of concept also comes into play when you are looking at remedial waterproofing. So with uh, even with a good grouting system, you can uh, do positive waterproofing on one side, if the need be, means you definitely need to do it so that your st structure is protected. But in case your external part is not available, you can also uh, do negative waterproofing using uh, this kind of injection grout systems. So now the main question remains, how do you select these injection materials? And very simply put, it is based on the crack width. So the more the crack width, you can use a coarser material. So for the bigger crack widths, you can use cement based systems. And as they get finer, as the crack widths get finer, you have to use uh, low viscosity epoxies or PUs or acrylic gels and so on. Also, the crack movement or the um, uh, whether they are water bearing or whether they're damp, whether they're dry, um, whether they are a load transferring system, whether you simply want to seal it. So all that, all these kind of different uh, <coughs> different kind of uh, mixture of uh, condition will determine uh, will determine how you select these injection materials in the long term. So we do we do also have a chart for that. And we'll be covering a lot more of it in the uh, in our next webinars. One is on repairs, and then as well as there is one uh, later on injection systems itself uh, coming up uh, coming up in the following week. So in that we'll be discussing a lot more on this. So I will not go much into the depth of it. But very simply put, you have to understand the concept of it. Say as long as it's a basic kind of you know surface cracks, not very deep. You can simply go with a waterproof coating on top of it. That should solve your problem. If your uh, surface cracks are a little bit deeper, you can go. Uh, you can go with an epoxy uh, epoxy impregnation kind of a system. If you find it a little bit still deeper, say maybe more than about uh, three, four, five mm. In that case, you can simply cut out cut out the uh, cut out the crack or chase the crack, fill it with the polymer mortar, and then use a coating on top. That would be one of the best ways to do it. Now, as your cracks become deeper. Uh, so then you need to come to more sophisticated materials as well as to more sophisticated injection systems. So here you can take a look that you can either go with a surface packer kind of uh, arrangement or if the cracks run really very deep and very long, in that case you can simply go with drill packers on both sides. So what this particular thing would do is ensure that your entire, uh, entire crack gets filled up from the word go and all the way up to the surface. Now in certain other cases you will find that 
the crack is going through and through through a structural element. And if this is the water side, and so water finds access very easily to your living space inside. So in this case, what you can do is uh, you can uh, think about going for curtain grouting. So what that means is you pretty much drill through your element. Uh, you can drill through your slab or through your basement wall, and then you uh, inject these methacrylate gels. So this gel in itself forms a kind of waterproof barrier outside. The uh, the next particular uh, these are some of the solutions that we offer. Um, so of course we've got the cementitious uh, injection grouts. We've got patching mortars like waterproof patching mortars for the second part of it. Injection based epoxy um, uh, sorry epoxy based injection grouts. We've got special chemical grouts uh, or chemical DPCs which is meant only for masonry. So a lot of options are available over there. And then from our partners TPH we also have got um, a range of very sophisticated PU injection grouts as well as metaphor based uh, based grouts. I think the next uh, these couple of videos will kind of help uh, help you to see much more easier like how this works. Like this particular uh, case study relates to uh, injecting injecting a resin into the concrete itself. Uh, it uses a particular PU uh, PU injection resin, which is a bit ductile. So this is the drill pattern method that uh, that we're talking about. So you just drill holes and fix packers, you know, intersecting the intersecting the crack at different uh, at different spots. So the methodology overall seems pretty simple. This takes a bit of uh, experience and also that comes with a lot of uh, the applicators that we have. It's this experience that kind of helps them to you know uh, dictate. Kind of helps, uh, kind of helps dictate. Uh, that will kind of dictate uh, how the uh, how the particular injection system will go through. It takes a little bit of experience to go through. Principally, it's very simple. But using this, a lot of different kind of uh, cracks, a lot of different kind of water leaking uh, systems can be addressed. Uh, the second uh, second thing I wanted to show you was uh, a part about curtain grouting. So this kind of particular uh, this particular method is based on um, uh, based on uh, based using metacrylate gels. So here, what you do in case your in case your uh, in case your element is already distressed and there's a lot of uh, water ingress already into the into a living space, so you simply go or you simply drill through the uh, through your element. Can see down there, so they're drilling across the joint to the bottom. You drill it through the walls. You create kind of a curtain, or you create kind of a grid uh, all across your uh, all across your uh, leakage prone area. Fix the packers, and you go through with an injection system. You can see it is going straight through the joint part of it as well, and go right behind the wall. So, in case of especially failed waterproofing systems, this is uh, this kind of an uh, this kind of uh, approach becomes very interesting because uh, because your uh, positive side, this right here, is not accessible anymore. So, you can go through and through your wall and then render your wall entirely waterproof. Uh, the same methodology is also used uh, to create effect in metro tunnels. Uh, it can also be used to fix uh, you know the metro uh, the gaskets between the uh, between the different elements, like those can be repaired with this kind of an injection technique. So it has got a lot of uh, it's got a lot of uh, applications, and this kind of technique also stabilizes your ground outside out here. Okay. So another thing you don't have to worry about with a lot of these products is that they are certified for use in contact with drinking water or with groundwater. So it doesn't once it's set, the material doesn't harm your uh, harm your groundwater in any way whatsoever. So this is another uh, this kind of curtain grouting or this kind of um, um, uh, curtain grouting behind their element. It's another method that becomes very interesting when you are taking a look at waterproofing systems. The next part comes that is to treat uh, to treat construction joints. So in that, the first thing that we look to or the um, uh, thing that is much most easiest to use according to our uh, experience is using swellable water stops. Now, even when we talk about swellable water stops, there are a lot of things available in the market. 
for example these two are uh, these two are more uh, from the european uh, kind of um, uh, spec they are manufactured to and what this means is that uh, these have these can expand they expand about 400 times but this expansion is limited uh, you can also see that uh, this is for example kind of a uh, not performing uh, i mean not a very good performing kind of water bath because it actually expands quite a lot and the consistency over time leads it to disintegrate so in that kind of a case in, in case the water pressure becomes high your entire uh, your entire joint actually will fail with this kind of a with this kind of a soluble water bath into it so you need to use you need to use the right kind of soluble water baths they are again very simple to uh, very simple to use it's just a video uh, just a video that you can see so anywhere you have a joint between uh, so either in a transition or in a cold joint kind of condition you simply just attach you simply just attach the soluble water bar to the concrete you can do this with nails uh, if if you want you can do this with a uh, attaching kind of uh, like a sealant system but it's normally very easy to attach a simple nail hammer through it will do okay so this is your concrete after it after it sets there's a little bit of shrinkage and it might allow water to come in through come in through this particular this particular um, area so in the presence of water uh, your swellable water bar will increase uh, will kind of swell up in size maybe this is about 400 300 to 400% uh, expansion that some something is looking at so it won't destroy your concrete in any way whatsoever but at the same time it forms a very tight seal against even about 5 bar water pressure so this is something which is very basic uh, it's something that should be used in almost every uh, in every basement construction that we're looking at another option that we get uh, is a flashing uh, tape what we call uh, like our material so that is called as a joint seal fp so it's very simply a high tenacity tape it's kind of a um, polypropylene non woven uh, polypropylene uh, non woven kind of uh, tape and uh, uh, it it's kind of it sandwiches it sandwiches a very age resistant thermoplastic between so what happens is uh, it is only uh, it is only uh, elastic in this particular direction it is not elastic in this direction okay so it's only elastic in the transverse direction but longitudinally it's very tough so what that does is when you attach it to your when you attach it to your uh, transitions it kind of bridges this entire transition and ensures that no water goes through this kind of a tape is excellent to use uh, excellent to use in uh, say bathroom areas even inside your swimming pool areas tanks uh, you name it it's it should not uh, create any problem and what it's very simple to attach like the video will uh, video will show you uh, show it to you can be attached very simply with tile adhesives and you can overcoat it with your uh, with your waterproof uh, coating system so that it's completely integrated into your uh, into your waterproof system you can see this is a very simple uh, very simple uh, flexible tile adhesive so you can simply use this uh, tapes just embedded into uh, just embedded into the tile adhesive system Uh, if i can just request someone not to draw on the screen please or if you can take it back okay you use very simple uh, very simple tools so you simply just make uh, make the tile adhesive layer sit the sit the um, tape down into it and that's pretty much about it even in and around uh, even in and around pipes the same thing can be used just make a small cut to your uh, to your tape and it can simply be you apply the tile adhesive and simply push it on that's it and this system can then be overcoated with your uh, standard waterproofing system to make that entire uh, entire area very very waterproof uh, this is another um, area which we have which is for treatment of uh, expansion joints so for expansion joints uh, one thing that you can do for a already leaking expansion joint uh, you can first look to treat it with the acrylic system you know you can just create a uh, create a particular uh, um uh what do you call that like a curtain behind your joint itself so that no water comes in and then you can also treat it with the expansion joint tape so this is basically an fpo tape that is uh, attached with a epoxy uh, with a thixotropic epoxy system so you can just put this across your joint and kind of 
saves it. Like this is this is how it's normally done. So you have your expansion joint. You just uh, put your uh, fixotropic epoxy at the bottom. You put the tape on, and then you kind of encapsulate it in the same epoxy system to hold it in place. Very simple system has been around for quite a long number of years, but something as simple as that can save, uh, can help uh, safeguard your structure against water. The next topic that we come to is uh, waterproofing barriers. So that means what you are actually doing is making a coating. So once we have done, uh, we have improved the concrete, we have treated all the cracks and words with injection routing, we have treated all the joints, and then uh, we'll be looking into doing the uh, barrier coating, the, protect, the final protective coat on top of your entire substrate. So the first one is, I think, everyone's perennial favorite. Um, it's uh, based on crystallization. So the concept remains pretty simple. Uh, if water goes in like normal concrete would be, uh, you know, it can allow water to go in quite easily. But once you use, once you use the crystallization-based uh, system on top, this kind of diffuses into your concrete by the osmotic process. And then whenever water is there or in presence of water, this kind of again uh, hydrolyzes further or crystallizes, blocks all the capillaries and does not allow water to go through. A simple animation, uh, this is your concrete uh, with your aggregates, the areas between will allow, that's your matrix over there. So once you coat it with your crystalline system, okay, it creates both a, a barrier kind of thing. And then this material also diffuses through the top. So as and when there is water, it does not, the water does not allow, uh, it does not allow the water to go in to this top layer. This works also very good in case of masonry and it also does, it does quite well against negative pressure as well. So it works both ways. It's quite a, it's quite a versatile system. Uh, like our system works more on the hydration process and it's very easy to mix and apply. It's simply, uh, you take water in the bucket, add the powder, mix it well to a slurry consistency and apply it with a brush. Um, these materials, they are rigid. Uh, they do not have a very, very high polymer content and therefore they do need uh, proper curing over time. It's easy to use. And you can use them, uh, again, these materials are quite versatile. You can use them for indoor bed areas and bathrooms, kitchens. Uh, you can use it as a broadcasting media when you're doing your floors or your basement drafts. So it's very good uh, just once you put your PCC on, you can do it on top of the PCC or uh, you can do it on top of, after you've uh, done your PCC and you've tried the reinforcement, you can still uh, sprinkle this and then cast your concrete. So the bottom of your concrete kind of becomes pretty important. It's very good for masonry walls, basements, uh, old buildings, heritage structures kind of things. Uh, it's good for use um, second, as a secondary system in podiums and STPs, drinking water tanks, swimming pools, you name it. So from there, we come to the next part, which is the highly flexible cementitious system. So the ones that, uh, ones that uh, we have today, um, uh, they're not simply mixtures of cement and polymers, like a lot of, uh, lot of waterproofing that happens in India. It says that, okay, you can take just two parts of cement, add a part of polymer to it, um, make a slurry and use it as a flexible system. No, that doesn't work. Because what happens is that uh, cement by default, uh, cement alone, uh, once you mix it with water, it has a tendency to shrink. So no matter the amount of polymer you add to it, after some time, the entire system tends to shrink, it tends to dry out very easily, and it tends to crack. And normally when that happens, that is when your waterproofing fails. So when we talk about highly flexible cementitious or 2K systems, the component A is a powder component which has been very, very specially designed. Uh, again, if I can request uh, uh, gentlemen and ladies not to write on the screen because it kind of takes away the experience from the other people, you can just sit back on your phones. Um, so when we talk about uh, 2K flexible systems, uh, the powder component is a very, very specially designed system. It's got uh, two or three different types of cements in it, uh, special, aggregate, uh, special aggregates, which are graded. Again, it's not simply one type of sand that goes in there. So a, a lot of um, a lot of graded aggregate goes into it. A lot of special additives go into it. Uh, things to improve the workability. Things to improve your uh, uh, the way the product handles and the performance. It contains fibers as well. So it's a lot more that goes into uh, a lot more that goes into uh, a good 2K product to make it you know very flexible to give it those kind of performance properties. So again, these materials are pretty easy to easy to apply. 
okay uh, you can apply it simply with a float you can apply it with a brush you can apply it with a trowel and uh, they're generally composed of a powder component and a liquid component so the powder component again it's not cement it's a very very specially graded or specially made uh, mortar system and your liquid component is also very very special design it's not a typical polymer that comes from uh, that you can buy in the market it's a blend of different materials and that's what kind of gives it its uh, gives it uh, the kind of properties i'll just uh, take one second to stop my uh, stop my screen share up there Uh, I think I'm sort of stuck here. Okay. Okay, so we are back on. Um, so the application uh, application for it is pretty simple. Like you have, uh, you have the material uh, that comes to this kind of a consistency, or you can apply it with a rubber trowel. You can apply it with a brush. It's normally very easy to do. And the kind of outstanding properties that we talk about for this particular material is uh, using uh, uh, that if it's got an elongation of over one hundred and fifty percent. That means it's very very flexible. It's almost as it's uh, as flexible or a bit more than the initial picture that you saw. It's got very very good uh, crack bridging properties, almost about a millimeter, and is resistant to water pressure of uh, seven bar. Uh, this material uh, it's highly polymer modified, so it's resistant to chlorides and carbon dioxide. Uh, and this kind of you know the crack bridging ability or the tensile strength also improves drastically with reinforcement. Means you can use a simple uh, AR glass fiber mesh um, uh, or a fleece, and it really helps to improve the properties. And of course, last but not least, the material is breathable. So this kind of uh, material has got almost universal application. You can use it for basement exteriors. You can use it in podiums, masonry walls, roof terrace, balconies, water tanks, I and mean, you name it. You can use it. Uh, use it pretty much. Uh, we'll see it in the next few things about details. Uh, if I can just request uh, our users or our attendees who are doing this to putting in the arrows to kind of take it back, just hit back on your screens if you have uh, put this on. And uh, the next uh, thing that we look at is uh, rooftop waterproofing or using one K acrylic systems. So these are ready, uh, ready to use out of the bucket systems. Uh, along with the reinforcement, you can use them very, very well to uh, treat uh, treat joints. Okay, this is one of the one of the main applications. We just okay. I just take this back and take this on again. So all those things on the screen are gone. Uh, these materials are pretty easy to apply. You can simply use a sprayer uh, or a brush application, uh, and you can. Uh, it's very easy to use and very easy to process. Now the main outstanding properties that you can think about these materials is that they have a very very high elongation. They're also fiber reinforced, so the elongation comes up to more than about 350, 400 uh, percent. Along with that, this material is so tough it can actually bridge cracks almost about two mm. So that means if you're laying it onto a well well prepared substrate, then you should not ever have a problem of it opening up ever again. It's got a very good uh, resistance, about five bar uh, five bar uh, water pressure uh, water resistance under uh, five bars. So you can very easily use it on terraces. You can even use it in your uh, areas like your you know a little bit of low traffic podiums, and terrace gardens, and so on. And of course, being acrylic, it's resistant to chloride, carbon dioxide, and of course, the properties improve with the reinforcement. Uh, we have seen that the tensile uh, strength for this material goes from somewhere around two to almost four and a half with reinforcement. That means it gets very very tough. So it's a pretty good uh, pretty good material to uh, to look uh, or to use for in case of ref uh, refurbishment. We use it for roofs and terraces in cases like podiums, terrace gardens, balconies. Uh, one of the ma main or good applications you can use it for is dead walls. 
so all your building external walls which are you know prone to water coming in frequently during the monsoon uh, you can simply use this coating you can get this in different colors so it makes your life very easy and at the same time also protect your building envelope very well uh, you can use this for uh, metal roofs as well as you can use this for different kind of flashing or joint treatment uh, it's better to use this more in you know positive side waterproof uh, the last part that we come to in uh, the coating systems is using polyurethane coating so we have basically two uh, one which is like a pitch modified system which you can use for things like podiums basements and so on and then uh, the other pu that you can kind of use it more on outdoor areas like your roofs or terraces or or gardens but you can kind of you know mix and match uh, mix and match the application but not, uh, not that difficult so again a few outstanding properties the elongation is almost of more than 4 uh, 400% excellent track bridging very high resistance to water it's not a problem uh, you can always reinforce one of these coatings to get more performance out of it and of course it has got a good adhesion and uh, good uh, the white one has got good resistance to uv as well so the primary areas where you use the uh, these materials are kind of basement coatings in the external sides in podiums terrace gardens and balconies uh, the white one or the the pu one without uh, without the pitch you can use for roofing sheets you can use it for metal roofs and you can also use it for flashing or joint paint so basically when you use the coating and you use a uh, say along a coating you use the coating and you use a reinforcement system along with it and that kind of holds the entire uh, or it kind of uh, waterproofs your entire joint or your transition system very very effective you can also use this as transitions between your masonry walls and your rcc structure okay so the last part that we come to so once we have taken care of you know the good concrete the coating the joints the uh, the joints as well as the um, uh, the voids and everything to injection uh, grouting the next part is the detailing so i will not actually go into the details there are about eight or nine different details that uh, that i have out here you know flat slab bathroom but you can see each each one of this pretty much uh, follows the same pattern so what you do is first uh, first you your basic concrete slab or your uh, this one would be, should be cast with a good uh, integral waterproofing additive from our line then you you can grout the cracks you treat the joints properly after that you have your coating on top of it okay this in case of bathrooms you have a tiling system which again works as the you know, it works as an additional uh, protection layer on top of it you use your like for example in basements you use your water bars again for transitions you can use it Uh, joint tapes or transitions up here. We use a piston line system here. The uh, highly flexible system here. Maybe we use a PU system around here. So it is this detailing. So which which kind of combines these four or five different uh, areas that we talked about, and with that we can detail almost any structure that's possible. So with the kind of uh, or with the range of uh, solutions that we can offer. So we have one for everything. So beat beat also uh, the specialist motors that you need to. patch your form holes to treatments for the joints the injection systems the coatings so using just a good combination of each one of these different systems and if you follow the concept step by step you can pretty much address any system like even when we talk about waterproofing podiums or roof gardens so here we have your uh, we have your uh, pu system as the main coating that goes in we can uh, use the same thing for your uh, terrace gardens you have your your grouts to fill um, to fill all your uh, um, uh, pipe insertions and so on you are using your water bars you are using the tapes so it just depends on how you are approaching the system as a whole we can take care of swimming pools be it underground water tanks overhead water tanks stv tanks you name it so just as long as you combine the right integral waterproofing the right joint treatment system the right void system and the right coating you can pretty much get to get to it or uh, kind of work with any particular um, any particular area or any particular uh, element that you need to um, that you need to waterproof you can also use tile adhesives as a waterproofing layer this is one of the things we never think about like especially in bath bathroom areas or inside just using a good quality tile adhesive like ours like uh, our channel is called uh, tile fix uh, the range is called as a tile fix so these materials are waterproof by default the tile itself is waterproof so once you're using a right waterproof tile adhesive to lay these tiles your entire surface that you're laying the tile on becomes waterproof by default so this is something that you can uh, think about in the 
uh, you can think about as part of your waterproofing strategy. Uh, we also do have very special coatings that you can use. So your entire external building envelope, be it a Maiwan structure, uh, like whether you have a Maiwan finished uh, outer envelope or you have a traditional plaster, uh, like a brick or a masonry and plaster kind of a system. You can protect your entire thing with the right kind of uh, anti-carbonation coating. A system called SS Protect Upon AC it has lasted pretty well on buildings even in harsh conditions like Goa or in Kerala or uh, a lot of the, um, uh, even in some places in Bombay. They have stood up to the test of time. They can, they function very well, but offer a kind of waterproofing and keeps water from coming into your living spaces very, very easily. So with that that kind of does uh, does it with the technical part of the uh, technical part of the session today, and uh, just a message that um, in, in these times it's better to stay stay uh, stay safe, uh, stay indoors. Uh, we can discuss a lot more on webinars or web sessions or you know uh, even on uh, uh, even on the phone. So get a lot of ideas to do things differently, and we have to know like uh, concrete with good water, integral waterproofing additives. We will come back stronger. So use your masks, wash your hands regularly, maintain social dis uh, distancing, restrict your outdoor movement, and things should be good. Uh, so we'll see you with the next presentation pretty soon. Uh, this would be on uh, 13th, uh, that is Monday, uh, on the coming Monday. Okay. So I think oh, that was from the previous one. So I'll see you again on Monday with another uh, another webinar on on repair systems. So uh, how do you go step by step in the repair concept and from there, how do we uh, take care of different aspects? We'll cover a bit of injection uh, technology to improve the lower carrying capacity of the uh, buildings and so on. A lot more interesting topics. So do join us on uh, 13th, that is Monday, 5 p.m. You shall be getting, uh, getting a link to attend uh, that webinar soon. And if you have any questions, you can always uh, get back to us at, uh, at the email address mentioned up here is info at assistbuildgame.com.